Okay, so the first step for the installation will be to connect the output from the isolator right here to the input on the distribution block. So the only tool that you're going to need is a small flat tip screwdriver. So these have a tooth on one end, not on the uh, back side, just on the top side. And there is a matching uh, set of grooves in the input. So push those two together. Then take your small flat tip screwdriver. Screw the screws on each end of the terminal together. And that portion of it is done. Okay, so before I mount this in its finished position uh, down in this location, I want to go ahead and install my fuses. If you're towing a trailer, the outside uh, fuses represent uh, left turn and right turn. Uh, fuse those at 5 amps. If you are not towing a trailer, fuse them at 3 amps. So I've got my 3 amp fuses here. This customer is not going to be towing a trailer, so I'm putting those in the turn signals. And then for running light and brake light, again, if you're towing a trailer, it needs to be a little bit higher up. Uh, 7.5, if you're not using the trailer, then let's fuse them at 5. All those values are included in the kit, so you don't have to go out and get any extras. And that is now uh, all set up and ready to roll. Last piece of the puzzle is going to be getting this in position. So, you can remove this connector, which makes it just a little bit easier. Press the tab on the back, pull it up. This will sit about that location. And then, to run the power and ground, go underneath the harness here. Over to the battery box. and then tuck the isolator down in that location. And once you have this positioned, make sure you plug this back in because if you don't, the bike won't run. Next piece of the puzzle is the sub harness. This is what connects to the connectors on the motorcycle to take the triggers for left turn, right turn, running light and brake light. Uh, this is the same a uh, 12 pin connector that Honda used for the tail lights on both left and right side. Uh, so the first step is going to be to disconnect the connectors. There's a tab at the top right here. You'll depress that. Connector will unplug. On the opposite side, the side that stays attached to the fender, uh, on the very bottom there's a tab at the back right there and you'll want to depress that and that will allow you to remove this connector from the fender and that's important and I'll tell you why here in a second. So press up and pull towards the front of the bike and that is now uh, uh, not attached to the fender any longer. So we are going to take the new sub harness, same connector, uh, again it's got the little tab in here and there is a brown a uh, piece of plastic is the retainer holder and just slide it up on that and once you have that plugged in you're going to plug the original connector back in and then you're going to connect the other two to each other and then what we want to do is tuck it down inside the frame here we want it inside uh, it needs to be below this surface so that the seat doesn't abrade it and make contact. So basically what we want to see there is nothing. And what I'm going to do is uh, stop the video and I'm going to restart it, but I'm going to be more focused in on this side so you get a better visual. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the left taillight connector. So I didn't explain this in the last step. Uh, the right side gets the wires with the blue, the green, and the yellow, and only the brown will go over to the left. So again, first step, disconnect the two. So press the tab, pull it backwards. Once you've done that, go to uh, this front side of the connector on the bottom, press up, and remove the terminal. Once you've done that, 
you're going to take the same connector but on the sub harness and you're going to put it on this little ear right here you can see that and push it up till it locks in place attach the original connector plug these two together and then we want to tuck it in this uh, cavity in the frame casting that will get it away from the seat and stop it from being damaged when the seat presses down. So now we've got this piece left which we need to get uh, down to the front. So I'm going to stop the camera and we'll pan back out so you can see everything again. Okay, so we've got this connector that we need to get down to here. So we want to run this underneath. And then make sure you take the brown wire, place it underneath this uh, flat piece of wire harness right here and then any extra you have just tucked down there it needs to go underneath this frame bar and then under these two wires just to the side of the rear control module if you have the standard going and not the tour this module will not exist this runs the heated seats and heated grips and then plug these two together and put it down underneath the harness and that's done. So now we'll need to make the connections at the battery for the ground and the hot. Uh, so depending on what bolt you have, if you have the original stock bolts, should be a large uh, flat tip screwdriver. If you replace the battery, it could either be a flat tip or a large Phillips head. Uh, usually they are all generally a 10 millimeter. Uh, if you do use a socket, uh, you really don't have to worry about accidentally shorting out on the hot leg because there's nothing metal here, but do uh, always use caution, always act like there is so that you don't accidentally start uh, practicing your 12 volt welding. So the first one we're going to disconnect will be the ground. And this customer already has a wire attached to that. Now this is done on the back side in between the um, battery terminal and the battery cable. I really don't suggest doing that. The reason is you are now taking all the current from the motorcycle and flowing it through this little plate. Uh, while it seems sufficient enough, Honda used a much bigger terminal, so you're not getting as much current flow through this as you would if it was just affixed to the battery like it was from Honda. So. We will correct that for them. So run the ground underneath the bus bar, or I'm sorry, the battery bar. And then we are going to attach this and then this. And yes, we do make mistakes and drop things. Now one point, uh, an additional point I like to make is if you end up with a lot of different components hooked up to the battery, uh, this factory battery bolt is not terribly long and you may find yourself lacking enough threads to actually get a grip. So you may end up having to go to a longer bolt if you have a lot of things attached. Okay, now we're going to do the hot. And we're going to relocate that charging terminal cable uh, connector to the outside where it should be. And got that tight. On these motorcycles, you need to make sure that this connect, I'm sorry, this bolt on both the battery terminals is super tight. If it's not, the bike might act like it actually has a bad battery. All right, so we've got the two uh, terminals connected, so we need to insert the main fuse. The main fuse is an additional source of safety. Uh, we include a 20 amp for this, which is more than enough to handle uh, a trailer, any lighting you have. 
but be at a safe value. All right, once you've got that pushed in, put your water cap cover on and tuck this right here so that it would be accessible if you needed uh, to look at the fuse without having to pull the seat off. Okay, so at this point I've got all the lights installed on the motorcycle. Now it's time to connect them to the flower heads. And we have all the lights on the right side, uh, run down the right side of the frame, and it's going to get connected to the red heat shrink indicating right, and then the white is for left. So the first thing that you need to do is remove the dust cover. And each of these connectors has a groove and that groove corresponds on the internal. So what you do is place it in, slightly rotate it until you feel it click, and then push, and it will click two more times. Once you have that done, go ahead and go to your next light. All right. Okay, so we've connected all three front lights to that leg. Now we're going to do the left side. And don't worry about tidying the wires up and getting rid of slack just yet. I'll show you how to do that in another step. All right, now we have just hooked up six different lights. The next step will be to do the lights coming from the rear and I'll show you that next. Okay, so the next step will be to hook up the lights uh, that are coming from the rear of the motorcycle. In this case, on the trunk lights, I run both of the wires down the right side of the motorcycle. Uh, so what we are going to do is plug these in this way. And then what we'll do is we'll fold these wires back and wire tie them in place so that it continues to look really clean. Okay, so our next step is going to be to clean and tidy up the wiring. Uh, pan out for you here a little more so you can see. So every bike is going to be different because we really never wire two bikes the same. So depending on how your bike is wired will really determine how we do this. But some of the fundamental steps will be the same. So for these wires that are going backwards to the right side of the frame, uh, we are going to take them and we are just going to wire tie them off on this post. And then for these front wires, for the left side, first thing we're going to do is just tidy them up a little bit. So that they're all grouped together. Now take the wires and always run them under the frame. Um, I'll show you another trick here in just a minute, but don't bring them in front of the bolt hole for the seat. Uh, it just makes it more complicated later on and you increase the risk of damaging wire. So always take it from under here, under the frame, and then up. Okay, now that we have the wire bundles tidied, we want to keep them in place so that they don't get smashed by the seat. So the way we do that is by tying the wires off on the frame right here. And again, we want these to try and stay down. And then take our clippers clean these up a little bit and we still need to tie off the wires on this side so again pull all the slack from all your wires out and on this side it's really not as critical because this hose here the way I've run it down this is really keeping this in place uh, you can go ahead and do that but not necessary Okay, so for the wires that are going to the back of the frame, uh, this customer already has a wire tie from an XN antenna. Uh, 
I am a firm believer in less is more, so I'm going to remove that original wire tie. And we will add our two wires in addition to the XM antenna cable. And again, looking to just keep things neat and tidy in appearance and keep them out of the way of the seat so they can't get crushed. Okay, so the last step is to remove any slack and get it uh, hidden in a safe place. Uh, this space right here is just incredibly ideal for that. So what we need to do is remove the clip from the hose here and then run these wires up and underneath. And then make sure you get that clip back in. Now I have removed the bolt here on each side and that allows me to pull this out much, much easier. And what I'm going to do is take this slack and twist them together here. And then whatever you can do to make it neat is all we're looking for. have to excuse the feathered friends in the background, they're a little loud today. And once you have that wire tied off, pull this up, push the wires up, and ta-da, clean. Alright, so don't forget to put your bolts back in and any other fasteners that you may have removed. Uh, also make sure Again, this is not our wire tie, that's from the previous XM install. Uh, clip off all your wire ties and you're going to have a really clean finished installation. Alright, we have a completed installation here. We have our wires going to the right side to the front, our wires going to the rear trunk lights, our wires going to the left front. Uh, we have the distribution block installed and we have four additional expansion ports still available. The isolator is hidden right here, uh, incredibly small, so it's not in your way. You still have room for other things to be mounted under the seat should they need to be. Uh, we also do include the sticker here uh, so that other people know that you have put correct isolation protection on the vehicle. That way when an installer goes to put something on later, they uh, know that they can contact us for information or they already know that since this is here, this is going to be here and that will make their job so much easier. If you have any questions, 865-219-9192, uh, electricalconnection.com or info at electricalconnection.com.